Okay, so today we're going to take a look at how to copy a beat as a starting point for a new composition. And this is kind of a creative technique to help you uh, get some fresh ideas or get out of a rut while you're songwriting. So a lot of uh, songwriters or producers like to start their track from the beat up. That means they start with the rhythm only and then build the, the chords, the melody, everything that goes into a song around that beat. So uh, a great way to do this is to basically just uh, kind of steal copy a beat and then uh, build around it and you can go back and change it later because the the beat kind of becomes the spine of the song so today we're gonna be uh, borrowing very kindly from uh, Lil Wayne and his song lollipop so uh, the first step uh, what you want to do is get a drum kit going today we're gonna be using the 808 drums so come over here to your Library, choose Drums, Kit Core 808. Sounds like what we want. Drag it right over there. All right, so now we have our 808 sounds. And they're sounding great. Okay, so uh, first of all, we need to hear the song or the beat that we're trying to copy. So come over into iTunes or your preferred music playing software find the song you'd like to copy today we're doing lollipop and what you do is just play this track I'm not gonna do that right now I know what it sounds like and then slowly tap in the tempo so you need to be clicking on this tap button up here until you get a fairly even tempo in in my case I got it to 73 so once you've got a good tempo come over here and let's create a blank mini clip just double click right there and uh, we want to start by listening to the snare sound or in some cases the the clap sound those are usually going to be uh, the things that really help us uh, feel the rhythm so still in iTunes play your track again and as you play it try and listen for just the the snare or the clap sound and try to put that on your grid and depending on the complexity of the song, you might not be able to get away with this in just, you know, one bar. You might need to go down here and change it to either, you know, two bars or four bars to contain the, the real loop of the rhythm, depending on if it's, you know, a simple programmed hip hop song versus, you know, uh, maybe a really complex uh, prog rock song. But in our case, it's pretty simple. So we'll just do one bar. All right. So uh, let's say I'm listening to Lollipop. And I've got my clap sound ready. So I'd go through and kind of play it and uh, try and get the, the clap down. Alright, so it's something like that. And uh, be sure when you're playing a clip and you want to record into it, be sure to click this button right up here. Alright, so that sounds good. Looks like I was a little off here, so bring that back to 1.2, 1.4. Alright, and, and of course, it's a good idea to turn the click on for this as well. Let's turn the volume down a bit though. Alright, so once you've got a pretty steady uh, grasp of what the snare sound or the clap sound sounds like, then you need to move on to, I would say, the kick next, the, the subby part, the kick or the, the boom part, right? So, uh, again, referencing your track, play your track. And then while it's recording, something like that. Uh, in my case, I, I can't really remember what it sounds like. So we'll just copy over here, kind of cheating a bit. There we go. And again, this is trial and error. So just keep listening to what you've put down and what the original track is doing and try to make it match as close as possible. And you might need to change the grid also, depending on the complexity. So you can always do that by uh, right-clicking here and going to fix grid and changing between, you know, a bar, a half beat, quarter beat, uh, beat uh, 8, 16, 30, 30 second. You can also do triplets depending on the style of music. All right, so now we've got the basic kind of skeleton of our beat down. Uh, but another element that I really love 
of the uh, lollipop song is uh, how the hi-hats sound. So let's hear our hi-hats. So now what we can do is try and get that hi-hat sound in there. All right, so it looks like I got it the second time. So why don't we just pull this back, copy all this, and come back here and paste. Bring that first beat back. So, you can take the click off now. That sounds pretty good. But one thing you can do, especially for hip hop hi-hats, is uh, when you've got kind of a run of hats like you do right here, that t -t -t -t. So why don't we come down here, select these three notes, and just take actually just these two and drag the velocity down a little bit so that it scales up. And then we can take this one, drag it up. And we'll do the same over here, but listen and here it's a little more dynamic. So you can hear the difference. This one's got a little more character to it. This one's kind of flat and programmed. So we can kind of copy the same thing. All right, so now that we've got our uh, beat, we can start building around it. Now a great way to make this sound better, first of all, because it is just an 808 kit, is to add some effects. Why don't we add something nice like a, um, a nice glue compressor. Dial the threshold back until we get the needle moving a little bit. We move the ratio up. Add a bit of makeup. Let's get a little bit more. There you go. Maybe even a little reverb. Again, I like to start blank. So I turn all this off. Make sure we're on a high quality setting. This is an insert, not a send. So we want to bring the dry wet down and also bring the decay time down a bit. And let's turn this back on. I want a little low cut. I don't want that low. I basically want this to affect only the, the high end of the clap and the hi hat. Let's bring that pre delay down as well. So that's a little more character to it. We can even compress the reverb. Let's see how that sounds. Yeah, it gives us a nice effect. Uh, and then once you've got your beat sounding how you like it, uh, you can go about also exchanging the samples. So here, we're just using this really simple 808 kit. But let's say we added samples, our own samples instead, it might sound something like this. So that's a, a lot more character if you choose your own samples. I really encourage you to be sample hunters and go out and get your own. Then you can layer them as well, you know, mix to taste, however you like it. And then you can start to add, you know, your own sounds. Maybe add a, a crazy loop of a purring cat. Maybe add a nice pad that's side chained to the beat. We need to play this one. Maybe add a return with some reverb to add a little character. And you can add, you know, your bass notes and uh, your lead notes. Before you know it, you've got a full track uh, that you can go ahead and start arranging and uh, further riding around. And if you start to feel cheap because you ripped off a beat, you can always just start taking this stuff out and program a new beat behind it. All right, so that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, please uh, leave them in the comment box below and uh, look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks.